the last sentence there, uh, Police Chief Frank Dyson says he will push for a murder indictment for an uncalled, illegal, and unjustified killing. So Dyson uh, quickly moved on this in a way that no chief has certainly done, done since. Actually, uh, um, next slide, please. Um, Officer Kane had actually killed a kid named Michael Moorhead uh, in April of 1970, and he had not been punished or indicted in that killing. Black kid. The, uh, this killing was investigated by the grand jury, of course, and the DA and no bill. Uh, he was no bill. Uh, internal Affairs cleared him, and they also got the Greater Dallas Community Relations Commission to investigate it twice. And each time they, uh, they said that it was probably justified, but that he had probably used excessive force. But if you look at the very last uh, thing there where it says uh, shortly after the Moorhead shooting Dallas police policies on the use of firearms were rewritten to to emphasize the value of human life and moral obligations involved in drawing a weapon so the Moorhead case is pretty much like cases nowadays. It resulted in no punishment for the officer, and it, it resulted in a stream of good intentions about the sanctity of life and how we're going to reform uh, the police department. <clears throat> this was in uh, August of 1970. Next slide, please. Uh, this is uh, Bessie Rodriguez. This is Santos's mom. In 1978, the, uh, I don't like to do too slick a presentation. Anyway, in, the, in 1978, Attorney Griffin Bell had been on a tour of the Southwest, and he had said at that time that uh, this was at a, the National Press Club. 1979. This is Attorney General Bell. This is, in a sense, a national problem, but it doesn't involve that many cities, so it's a national problem of, I guess, if we had one city, it would be a national problem, but it's not widespread. I don't want to give that impression, but I've talked to groups who represent those whom abuse has been practiced, against whom abuse has been practiced, and I've talked with the Law Enforcement Assistance Administration and we're working on some programs to train people in sensitivity, you know, police officers. And we're looking at some, we're looking at the idea of filing a suit with the Justice Department. Now that would be an unprecedented suit, you know, in a city where there's been a good deal of police brutality. At least that's what we've been studying. That's the thing we're going to do. And so that day, June 14, 1979, is the origin of the 28 or 29 consent decrees that the Obama administration has actually gone into with cities around the country. It took a while to get it um, going, but that was the germ of that idea. This letter was written because uh, Attorney General Bell could not see his way to a civil rights violation in the Santos Rodriguez case. And so uh, one of the first things I did as an activist was type out uh, Bessie Rodriguez's letter to the president. And I put that in there just, uh, she still has his reply on her wall at home, so he did reply. Um, let me have the next slide. If you move to uh, uh, 1980, this, I, I'm sorry to tell you I don't have the name of this victim, but this is a, a story in the New York Times about a victim. And it said the victim uh, was the eighth person to be shot and killed by Dallas police this year, and that would be 1980, and the 14th to be shot. All eight killed had been black. In all of 1979, nine persons were killed and 17 wounded in police shooting incidents. In 78, nine were killed and seven wounded. So these are not every year, but these are not untypical years in that time. Um, this was from 1984. 
So last Saturday night, August 18, 1984, Juan Reyes was shot in the back of the head and killed when a Dallas policeman fired his 357 caliber service revolver through a chain link fence that he said Reyes had just scaled after fleeing from a downtown robbery. Reyes was not carrying a weapon. Reyes was the 18th person shot by the Dallas police this year. Ten of them died. Of those 18, all but one were Hispanic or black. All of the police officers were white. In the last four years, which would have been 1980 to 19, really would have been 81 to 84, 114 people have been shot by Dallas police, 91 of them black or Hispanic. Nineteen eighty-three was kind of a watershed year in, in Dallas. Uh, it was uh, this was in November of that year, and we had a, a, a citizens review board that had been put together. It didn't really have a, a lot of power at that time. It was something that Fred Blair and Elsie Fay Higgins and Anna Strauss had actually got through the council, and there were twenty-six shootings that year and thirteen fatalities. This is Etta Collins. Uh, she was kind of a, the, for the 80s, she was kind of the iconic police shooting. Uh, she was killed by the Dallas police October 25th, 1986. Uh, about 18 months later, the officer who did it uh, was no billed by the Dallas Grand, County Grand Jury. And he was uh, a rookie, uh, had less than a year on the force at the time of the killing, and he was fired on March 5th. 1987. Uh, the city settled for $225,000 in a suit filed by Mrs. Um, Collins's grandchildren. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, that's my next thing. Um, at the time, Officer Krauss said that Miss Collins came out on the porch and she moved quickly to the edge of the porch, shot at the police, and he had to shoot back at her. Then after he shot her, she moved quickly back into the house and collapsed and died. And so this was a shooting, yet an armed person, even though she was 70. And um, the police officer feared for his life and he had to shoot her. Now, Ms. Collins had called because there was a burglar next door. And there is some evidence that she shot at the burglar, shot at the house next door, before the police arrived. It was Officer Krauss, I can't remember the other guy's name, you might remember, but. So this was the reason that they were no build, and things went on. The reason he got fired was not for killing a 70-year-old woman. The reason he got fired was for a failure to follow certain procedures. Well, I guess you could say, because he wasn't, he didn't do the um, uh, force other than deadly. They said he should have pulled back. When, he, when she shot, he should have pulled back and called for backup. Now, it came out, go to the next slide. It came out about five years later, I guess, or three years later, two years later, that um, the story was quite different. Um, I'll just tell it, but one, Ms. Collins, uh, could hardly walk. Uh, she could not move quickly in any direction. She turned out she was actually shot through the door. When the autopsy was, um, she had a, like a glass screen door. And when the autopsy uh, came out, and the door was shattered, and then she had glass in her wound. And it also turned out that she wasn't holding her gun, that it was in the house on the floor from when she had fired it before. The evidence was that she was opening the door probably to let the officers in. The reason they found this was that a guy went behind them, a, another detective went behind them, and he was looking at pictures, and he saw blood on the cane. And he thought, okay, she's 70, she has a cane by her side at all time, maybe she can't move quickly. And so that's when the story, Krause's story began to unravel. The reason they knew she didn't drop the gun was that there wasn't any carpet fiber on the gun. So there wasn't any impact with the carpet, you know. 
like she set it down. And so this is a, a another, uh, I think, really revealing uh, shooting. Because you have the person calling for assistance. You have an inexperienced officer, although they're not always inexperienced. You have a, an officer's story that is uh, overturned by the uh, subsequent facts. But you, have, you also have an officer who, who did get fired, but he certainly wasn't ever tried for murder. And he never went on trial for any of this. Even though uh, Mrs. Collins, let me have the next slide. Um, when the autopsy was released, it showed that Ms. Collins was standing behind her glass storm door when she was shot because glass stippling her traces was present around the wounds in her chest. Hand washings performed on Ms. Collins did not turn up the gunshot wound. Richardson, this was the other late coming investigator, could not find any bullets outside the house where she was supposed to have fired. Uh, Richardson said Ms. Collins was probably given was most probably, given the paths of the bullets and the wounds on her arm and chest, opening her storm door with one hand. Her chest wound would have resulted in immediate bleeding, hence the trail of blood on the carpet from the door to the couch, where she lost consciousness. There were others that year. Um, there was a guy that ran the crime watch at the Park South Manor elderly home, and uh, this was in the crack era, and the people, uh, the housing authority could not afford security, so he had like a 410 shotgun, and he used to go out there and shoot up in the air and scare the people from breaking into their cars. And one night he called the police, his name was Albert Horton, and he called the police as the crime watch leader. When they got there, of course, he's standing there with his 410, and they just killed him. And so that was a, another one that was kind of... But anyway, all of this led to... Uh, uh, Dallas being actually number one among the nation's 11 largest cities as far as uh, police shootings went. And this was, um, we used to have two newspapers here, young people, and they were actually read avidly. One was more like the Democratic newspaper and one was like the Republican one. And so this came from the Dallas Times Herald, but I picked it up in the Associated Press. Uh, Dallas ranked number one among the nation's 11 largest cities in a use of deadly force for the second year in a row, according to a survey of police departments. Police officers in Dallas killed 1.03 people per 100,000 population and wounded 1.95, the Dallas Times Herald reported Sunday. Uh, San Diego was second with 0.83 people killed, and Los Angeles was third with 0.71 deaths. So, uh, the next one, sir. Uh, per capita, Dallas police killed about four times as many people as police in Philadelphia, Baltimore, Phoenix, and New York, and twice as many as in Chicago, Houston, San Antonio, and Detroit. Uh, Dallas police officers shot and killed 10 people and wounded 19. Uh, the city's force also ranked number one in 1985.